but I was trying to. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Everything Belize. I'm your host, Johnny Belize, my future retire name. And today I have with me Daryl and Angela Gibson. How you guys doing? Oh, you're cutting in and out a little Good. bit, I think. I don't yeah. know if it's the uh, internet speed or, or what's going on. I'm sure we, we could probably work. How are we doing? Are we still good or? Yeah. Sounds good now. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, where are you guys originally from? Austin. Well, I, I don't want to claim Austin. No. <laughs> We're from Round Rock, Texas. Yeah. We're just north of Austin in Pflugerville area in central Texas. Cool. So uh, what made you guys find out about expatting? <sighs> well, as you know, from your experience, I spent 30 years in law enforcement and um, really wasn't happy with the direction. Uh, the, I, I don't blame the career because I would have never taken that a different direction. It was a calling for me and I felt like it was honestly the, the best thing I could have done with my life. Um, I got a chance to help an awful lot of people. I got a chance to do an awful lot of things I never would have been able to do. Um, I worked in a small municipality outside of Dallas, Texas called Garland, Texas. That's where I started. Um, and then I moved back home, my hometown and, and started with Travis County. I really enjoyed, um, being the guy that was there when everybody always says, where's a cop when you need one. And so I did many, many years in patrol. I was on our public safety dive team for 19 years, recovering bodies off the bottom of Lake Travis, that sort of thing. Did an awful lot of evidence recovery, got a chance to work uh, uh, traffic enforcement, commercial vehicle enforcement, did a lot of time in CID, got a chance to work, you know, domestic violence cases, which was extremely rewarding and got a chance to work homicide investigations. Again, very, very rewarding. Uh, and then I got the opportunity to promote the sergeant and to look after some of the younger troops that don't come to the job with the experience and wisdom that that experience brings and sometimes get a chance or an opportunity to uh, look out for them in a way that, you know, because sometimes a, a brand new troop is so full of spit and vinegar that Sometimes they can be their own worst enemy and make a mistake and try to educate them as best I could, look out for them and guide them, mentor them, that kind of thing. And that was probably, if it wasn't homicide, being a sergeant was the pinnacle of my career, my biggest ambitions. And oh my God, I loved it so much. Unfortunately, you know, the direction politically, the direction that some of these uh, liberal cities are going right now kind of um, made me fear not so much dealing with some of the worst that society has to offer whenever I did that on a daily basis. I can mitigate that. I did it for 30 years. I know how to mitigate my damage and my, and my liabilities. But worrying about being indicted and spending my entire financial future defending myself to keep myself out of prison for something that I did not do anything wrong on, which is a very real uh, threat and, and danger in Austin and Travis County right now with a record number of officers being indicted by our DA. That is what pushed me out of the career. Um, we had already been to the Caribbean a couple of times. Uh, we've been on vacations to Cozumel. We've been on cruises that, that came to Belize. I've always been in love with the Caribbean. Angela was a scuba diver with me. We really enjoyed diving in the Caribbean. And we just happened to stumble across a video that Dennis Kay had put out several years ago. Um, and we saw that at a time where I was at home recovering from surgery and I had a lot of time on my hands to start doing some research. And it planted a seed and I started doing that research into Belize and I started finding out that Belize had an awful lot to offer us. Angela's biggest fear and, and understandably so is we have grandchildren. And one of them in particular, our first grandson, um, she's helped 
you know, so much in raising him because, you know, he has a single father. Um, she really was not looking forward to leaving him. No. <laughs> but then when you look at it from the perspective that Belize is only a two hour flight from Houston away and he could come and go, we can come and go. It's, uh, it was a little bit of a, of a sugar coating, I think on that bitter pill. How about you, Angela? Um, I wasn't so easily the one to think of it. Uh, Daryl was the one. He uh, came to me and said, he always has these wild dreams of <laughs> what he wanted to do with retirement. You know, it was the 50 acres in the middle of Texas with five acres cleared and our house in the middle. And I, um, I just was not interested in the snakes and all of that. I just was like, that wasn't really my appeal. Um, although the goats, the baby goats almost had me. <laughs> um, but I, he just came to me one day and said, would you give me one year in Belize for retirement? We'd already been looking at videos together at that point. Yeah. He said, would you give me one year? And I was like, I'll give you one year. And that got the ball rolling. Now we're here. We've sold everything. <laughs> and we're here permanently. <laughs> so when, when, did the, uh, when did the journey begin, though? Like, I know you said, you mentioned, Daryl, that, uh, you know, you've been on some, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, cruises. You've been to the Caribbean. But uh, was it the pandemic? Like, because like, that's what got me. Like, boredom got us. And uh, we, you know, we started surfing the internet and my wife, you know, she's been to Belize before and that's when it started for us. And that's when we really started doing the research. So when, uh, I guess the question would be, when did you guys truly decide, you know what, this is it, this is Belize, this is, this is you know, this is what we're doing? I would probably say that the pandemic had something to do with it. It just coincidentally was the time that I went down after having to have surgery and I was going to be out of work for three months, you know, in your job description, it requires you to sometimes have to take physical control of people who don't want to be arrested, that kind of thing. And I had had bicep tendon repair on my arms. So that was out of the question for at least three months. And it came out to be closer to four months. Ironically, not only did we have the pandemic, not only did we have my, my surgery, but our anxiety levels were going up quite a bit because we also had a lot of riots going on around the country and even in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And Angela was, you know, we've talked with you a little bit about her medical conditions and stuff like that, but along with a chronic pain condition sometimes and oftentimes because a little bit of anxiety uh, issues. And she was starting to get to the point where she was really dreading me going to work. Yeah. We all know in this line of work that coming home is not a guarantee. And I worked the busiest shift on the busiest side of the county. And we uh, sometimes find ourselves in rough spots. She was getting very, very anxious about that. And then when I did go back to work, she was not excited about that at all. Um, almost every day I'd get ready to go to work and I'm getting my uniform on and she starts having an anxiety attack about what's going to happen today when he goes to work. And so we just start looking at retirement a lot more and where mm -hmm. our retirement was going to be because we knew he was not happy living in the suburbs of Round Rock. He just he was not happy about that. He wanted yeah. to move to someplace. And so it was his dream to figure out where he was going to put us. Where did we want to go that, one, he's a fish out of water. And so where was he going to go that he could have be close to water? Well, the Gulf of Mexico is not a place to go swimming and fishing. I mean, fishing is good. Swimming, not so much. And scuba diving, not so much. So it was kind of like, okay, maybe Florida if we were going to stay in the United States, but then. 
Was- That's when he started going, thinking back on our cruise and that we came to Belize. And to be honest, I never felt like being a retired officer that I could afford to live in the Caribbean yeah. as a retiree. I never would have a, a thought that even though I always dreamed about going to the Caribbean and being able to live there, I never thought I'd be able to afford it. And I think that's where Dennis Kay's videos were pivotal for me because we started seeing these videos about uh, real estate prices and what it's like to live in Belize. And then we started doing more and more research about it and looking at, okay, this is something that we could actually do. And we have a financial advisor who is kind of, I guess, like our mediator in West Young. And so if I have one of these crazy hot-headed ideas kind of thing that maybe Angela's not completely on board with, um, I mean, he and I go to the same church. Angela has known him from church. We trusted him with our finances, but he's also a pretty good um, uh, buffer to say, okay, let's, you know, examine your, your thoughts here. And if, if this is something you really want to do, let's see if it's something attainable. And so once we started looking at, if we really wanted to buy a piece of property, number one, could we afford it? Number two, is it something that we could pass on to our kids? Because a lot of times, you know, like, for example, in Mexico, you can't own property unless you're a Mexican citizen. And so we wanted property that, you know, in the future, we'd be able to pass that on to our kids. And you can do that in Belize. And so that opened another door. Okay, it's not a $99 or a 99 year lease. It's something that we have clear title to now. And so we started looking at it at that aspect. And so then, you know, Wes, our financial advisor was able to counsel us on, okay, if this is something you're truly wanting to do, this is how we can make it happen. And so we took his advice and we ended up, you know, uh, hooking up with Dennis, bought him a cup of coffee. He makes Zoom calls, you know, like we're doing now and starts showing you properties that kind of uh, meet, you know, your goals, what you're looking for. Uh, he showed us one piece of property in particular that, you know, we said, yeah, we like that. Let's make an offer. And then he called me back like five minutes later and said, I'm sorry, somebody just made an offer and they took it. So then we found the property up in Habaneros and really felt like we were being led in that direction. And because uh, number one, it was a much bigger piece of property. It was not any more expensive than the other piece of property we were looking at. But oh my God, it was beautiful. But we, I mean, to go back to your original question, you know, what was the point that we chose Belize? Um, I think it was Daryl's research into um, he saw he saw Will um, Dennis Dennis's videos, and that just got him sparking on you know English speaking. Started ticking off the boxes, and so he started doing more and more research. And it's, that's where it led. Well, you know, it's again uh, today. My my uh, my mother in law lives with this, and you know, she yelled up from downstairs and said, "Hey, electricity is going up eight uh, percent." You know what I mean? And wow. and so, and that's here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, in order again, I got four years left till I retire, and it's like, can you afford to live in the United States when you retire? Like, I I think the answer to that's going to be no pretty soon, unless you have I financial right. stability. So, uh, you know, I, I too ran into Dennis K and that was where I started my research. And, uh, the only thing that kind of Dennis is a great guy. Him and I still chat was, you know, you hear about the scams and I, you know, I'm just, okay, I'm just talking to a guy named Dennis K. So I kind of like backed the out and I, when I had met Will Mitchell and with Remax, you know, my wife and I were, were, you know, felt a little bit more comfortable. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's the, the money ratio, um, you know, the cost of living, it mm-hmm. just, it just, it, it just all made sense. Yes, it does make sense, and you're right about the cost of living going up and up and up, with no end in sight in the continental United States. Um, it's one of the things where, when I made the decision to retire, my intent was to do 30 years with my agency, and I, I ended up retiring it at the 28th year. Um, I retired two years early just because I was afraid of the direction that things might go in the next two years, but 
would I be able to live in the Austin suburbs, Austin, Texas area as the prices were going up like you're describing? On uh, retirement. Not on my retirement at 28 years, I don't believe. That's why we were looking to go somewhere. And we wanted to land somewhere that was safe and uh, affordable, that sort of thing. But- also, though, can I touch on that? Um, I've got, you know, a medical condition that we are so close to the equator down here that I don't have pressure changes down here that I have in the U.S., and that really affects me. And so that was a key thing is that every time we came to visit, I felt so good here. Yeah. And so that was a bent. And that was, I would say, 50% of the reasons. Probably more so because honestly, that was something we couldn't have anticipated. No. That just moving to another place would make her feel so much better. I mean, it's not like somebody who has asthma and needs to go to a drier climate. No, no. This these barometric pressure changes and the cold fronts coming in and in the last two years in a row we've had some really cold weather you know nothing like austin area has ever seen before and oh my god she'd be down for her uh for several days or a week because she hurts so bad every time we came down here even in january it's you know right now it's 82 degrees outside it's beautiful it's out beautiful Um, And so she felt much better. That was something we could not have anticipated. It was just icing on the cake. And uh, once again, it kind of led us to believe or reaffirm that this is where the Lord led us. And he wouldn't lead us here for a reason if it wasn't something that we needed to really examine closely. Yeah. It just goes to show you that how a lifestyle change in itself is, is good for, you know, the human body. And and the yes. action, and after going through what I'm going through, you know, just with a fighting cancer, um, you listen. I'm if I could retire now, I mean, trust me, I I, I would be there. I'd be like, yo, know, just <laughs> I'll be calling you down, or, or I'll be calling Sean. Yeah, you know, I need a place to stay for a couple months. So we got, but, <laughs> you know, since you guys you guys retired to Belize, right? Mm-hmm. You guys had already purchased your land, and I we all seen on the videos about you know you have options. What kind of options did you guys when it came choosing a land what were you looking for specifically and then when you found that like what style like how did you go about deciding what kind of home you're going to do because there's there's different ways you can build on site you can get a barge in you can go stick you can go cement right where did all this fall in place for you guys well we um we we told dennis our budget and we said this is what we're looking for and kind of help us look at some properties and we looked at, he gave us several in the secret beach area. And um, we actually were looking in that area. Mm-hmm. The first offer we were going to make was on a secret beach property. Um, and then it got bought out from under us, so to speak. But when he found the property in Habaneros, um, it was. That. It, that was, I mean, it, it, you knew immediately. Oh my gosh, this is This beautiful. is it. Now, we were specifically looking for something in the path of progress. Yes. You've heard him say that on his videos before, because we knew that that would increase value in case something, let's say after a year, Angela says, I'm done. <laughs> let's get out. You know, let's whatever the reason, if some medical issue came up that we had to abandon our, our hopes, then we knew we'd get a return on that investment. And so we wanted it in the path of progress. We wanted the place that where, where there was electric you know, or at least the option to bring yes. electric. And so he took all that into consideration. And whenever he spit out a list for us to take a look at, this was one of those properties. So it just really checked off all the boxes as far as what we were looking for. And we actually, he presented us with a piece of property that was larger than any of the other properties we'd seen for the same price. And we were like, wow. How often does that come along? And we started looking at the map and Daryl does a lot of research into stuff and saw the overlays and saw how green it was where we were at with the trees, how close it was to the ocean. Um, it was just, it, we just both really prayed about it. And then it was like, okay, this is it. Let's pull the trigger. And we both were like, yep. And we told Dennis, this is it. I had the benefit also of being in the military. I did some um, 
classified work. And some of that was satellite imagery and tracking, that sort of thing. And so I know what I'm looking for. If I look at a Google Earth overview of a piece of property, even though it's Google Earth, so it's got a lot less information in it than military satellites do, I know what I'm looking for. And being able to look at how green that area up north was, let's say, for example, compare that to Secret Beach. We knew that it was good soil. We knew that it was good land. We knew that there was somewhere close to the surface, a fresh water table to sustain that kind of vegetation. I could zoom in and see that we had an elevated land above you know, sea level so that flooding might be less of an issue. And all we needed to do then was look at some photographs of it, maybe some drone video of it. And he sent us those. And then our first trip down after we closed on the property, uh, we went ahead and went up there and examined it firsthand and confirmed everything that I saw in my, my research and, and what we were looking for. And we knew that it was right. Now, a lot of people think you're crazy for buying a piece of property sight unseen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I got as much information as I could from the videos, from the uh, Google Earth imagery, from the photographs and all that sort of thing. And I knew, OK, if this doesn't pan out and we don't like it, we could always sell it mm -hmm. and find something more appropriate. And so it wasn't it, we looked at it from the perspective of this is an investment. Yes. And if you look at it that way, you know, you're not going to lose money on a piece of land. Uh, it's going to appreciate in value, especially because we knew it was in the path of progress with Margaritaville going in about two miles north of us, that sort of thing. And so we did that. And so once we got there and saw it, we fell in love, we fell in love with it. And so that's how we ended up where we're at. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's funny, you mentioned like the, the, everything appreciating. I don't even have land built yet. And, and from what I know so far, just off of what we're going to have built, um, everything said and done, I would have probably spent about 150000 maybe a little bit more because price is going up. But, you know, if I was willing to sell it, some of the price, some of the, what they're going for, what the amenities will have, it's, it's already, you're talking $250,000 and up. Yes. Well, so and with the, with the rate that these property values are going up, how fast they're going up. I mean, we've, we've owned this property for roughly 14 months and it's already more than doubled in value. I mean, if yeah. we were to turn around and sell it tomorrow, we would get, you know, uh, at least 100% return on our investment. So, you know, what will, what's there to, to think about? What's there, what else is there to consider There's at that point? nothing to lose. So, so what, what has daily life been in Belize since your retirement? Well, it's been it's, awfully boring the last three weeks. It's, it's different <laughs> here. And, and we'll have to say because um, Daryl just had back surgery. Yeah. And so he's been down for the last three weeks. And um, so he hasn't been able to do anything. And so that's really frustrating. Sure it is. But You're in paradise and you can see it from the window. <laughs> yeah. He had just, I mean, we had just made a lot of connections. We have. He had done um, the Key Cocker Lionfish, Lionfish Festival. Festival and Great met, video, by the way. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. Met some wonderful guys. And to this day, uh, one of the gentlemen, um, Eddie, has been so wonderful, calling Daryl, praying in for on him, you. you know, just wonderful t calls and just wants to take him out. And when you're ready, when you're ready, we want, let's go flying fish, for, uh, you know, hunting. Um, so it, it's like we were, we just starting to emerge into the community. And that's what this is about it's not about coming here and changing the community no, no. we don't want what we had in the u.s that's why we left <laughs> that's why we left we came here to emerge ourselves in this community and be part of what belize is and we are loving every bit of it you know living in belize versus vacationing in belize yes that's two different animals. I mean, you're yes. talking apples and oranges. Everybody loves to come down in Belize on vacation and enjoy the sights and the sounds and the swimming and the ocean and all that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I would encourage people to come down and, and kind of get the feel for what Belize is like, because the people here are, are absolutely amazing. amazing. They are some of the best people we've ever met. And But living here, you'll get into a routine. You'll start to settle in. Just It's home. 
And so you're not going out to eat every night. You know, we go do our uh, grocery shopping in town and we bring back and we cook here at home, just like we did when we were living in the US. So you will settle into a routine. Uh, instead of going to the movies, you know, once every couple of weeks or something like that, we'll go out and hit a fishing trip or we'll go out and do a scuba trip. And we enjoy that kind of activities. Uh, we've got a pool that's, you know, 50 feet 50 from the feet back, from our... back patio. <laughs> yeah. And so we can go and hang out in the pool whenever I'm finished healing. And we can go out and snorkel. We can, and, but we don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars to do that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, I've gone out with a buddy of mine, you know, Eddie, and we can do some lionfish hunting. You know, he has access to a boat that we can go out on. We, uh, we have a kayak back home. Whenever we finalize our move and bring over the stuff that we have in storage, I'll be able to literally from the center of our property, it's a pedal drive kayak. I can pedal out 600 yards to the reef and do world-class snapper fishing off my own kayak. And it doesn't cost me anything, but a little bit of leg energy, you know, pedaling the kayak. And so that's, that's our new normal and the weather is amazing here oh it's all the time it's stunning we've had a little bit of rain the last couple of days because well, of agatha hitting the west coast yeah. of mexico but it's we also know that the rainy season is coming so we'll have more rain we have friends that live further up i think you guys are froze on me there if you can still hear me Just going to hang tight. Hopefully our connection comes back on. Down, Angel, if you can still hear me, I'm still hanging on for you guys. Oh, I think we, yep, we lost them. We lost connection. All right, everybody. Well, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but actually I don't want to lose this portion of our, our segment. But anyway, I want to thank Daryl and Angela for joining in today. And thank you for everybody else joining in today too and, and watching this segment. We will pick up again with Daryl and Angela coming up for part two of our interview about everything Belize. So for myself and Angela and Daryl, we want to thank you guys for tuning in and we will catch up with you next segment. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe and be blessed. <laughs>